The third type of geometric transformation I want to talk about on the plane is the idea of a reflection. We've talked about shears and we've talked about scaling previously. So what does a reflection do? Well, the general idea is if you have some point, let's say the vector V right here, a reflection is determined by an axis of reflection. So you have some line going through the plane. Reflection means that if you take the distance from you or from V to that line here, um, you're gonna go that same distance in the other direction. To be more precise, this is gonna be a right angle right here. Uh, and orthogonality is something we'll talk about a little bit later in this lecture series, but we can intuitively understand what this means in R2. Uh, so we're going to reflect this point on the other side of the line, the exact same distance. So the distance from the point to the line is the same on either side of the line when we do reflections. Now we're going to we're going to keep things simple and we're going to worry about reflections across the x axis and the y axis first. So consider the following uh, matrices: one zero zero negative one and negative zero negative one zero zero one. So these are diagonal matrices. And in fact, since all of the entries along the diagonal are one, except for maybe one of the numbers here, which is a negative one, these are actually elementary matrices of scaling type, okay? So previously we talked about this with respect to dilations and contractions, but we in that situation, we required the numbers on the diagonal that weren't one to be positive. We're now allowing for negatives here. So what happens is when you have a negative, it causes a reflection of some kind. So take this matrix right here, negative one, zero, zero, negative one. If I multiply this by the matrix, or if I multiply this matrix by the vector X, what you're gonna see is this ma or this matrix over here, since it's diagonal, you'll times the first, the first entry by negative one and the second one by just one. So what happens is you change the X coordinate, but the Y coordinates left alone. So what is that doing what is that doing geometrically? It's like saying we have this point over here, x comma y, but then you ref you replace the x coordinate uh, with negative x, and so it's going to be moving this point over here. So this would be a reflection across the y-axis. We'd be reflecting across the y-axis right here. In contrast, if we multiplied this matrix by x y, we would end up with the vector x negative y which has the effect of doing something like the following. We have the point x, y. You then change its y coordinate down here to be x comma negative y. That would be reflection across the x-axis. And so this first matrix, this is gonna be reflection across the x-axis. And then the second matrix has the effect of reflecting across the y-axis, okay? Uh, there's a third type of reflection I want to bring up is what if we use the interchange matrix 0, 1, 1, 0. This is the only, this is the only possible permutation matrix you can get for two by two matrices. What does this have, what does this do to a matrix, uh, to a vector, excuse me? If I multiply this by the vector x, y, notice you're going to get a y, x, like so. It swapped the order of x, y. Uh, and so geometrically what this is doing, and this is actually causing a reflection, in fact, but the reflection is gonna be across the diagonal line, y equals x. And so if we take a point, like say this one right here, x comma y, reflection across this line, y equals x, actually switches the x and y coordinates around. And so multiplying by this interchange matrix is reflection across the line, y equals x. So it's also a reflection that we're gonna incorporate here. Now, the general reflection, so if you take uh, some diagonal line, you know, where the angle could be anything with respect to the x-axis, that one's a little bit more difficult to take care of. And I actually, there's, I have a homework question in the textbook that deals with this very thing in steps. So I would encourage you to take a look at that as well. Um, now, if you were to compose reflection with the with the x-axis and reflection across the y-axis together, this actually gives you reflection across the origin which, uh, that is just doing both reflections together. So if you want to reflect across the origin, uh, you would multiply these two things, which notice here that the net product is just negative one, zero, zero, negative one. So if you were to times, if you scale a vector by negative one, both the X and Y coordinate, that causes reflection through the origin, which is the same thing as uh, reflecting across the x-axis and the y-axis. Let's see some examples of this. All right, so let's consider the point v equals two comma one. 
um, let's reflect it across the x-axis. We can see very quickly what happens here. If we take our point V to one, reflection across the x-axis will send it to the point two comma negative one. We should change the y coordinate there. And therefore, we see that if you multiply by the matrix one, zero, zero, negative one, by the vector two, one, you're gonna get two, negative one, and that reflects across the x-axis. So having the having the number in the second column be negative reflects across the x-axis. Uh, if we do this to the unit square, notice the unit square is gonna reflect downward uh, like we see right there. Reflection across the y-axis, like we said earlier, that should be multiplication by the matrix negative one, zero, zero, one. So you're gonna put a negative one in the x position and this will cause reflection across the y-axis. We can see this numerically why it happens. If you take the first row times this, you're gonna get a negative two. The second row times the vector will just give you back one. So the y-coordinate didn't change, the x-coordinate changes right here. And reflecting across the y-axis is actually considered a horizontal change, a horizontal transformation. The y-coordinate didn't change, the x-coordinate changed. And so you get that by multiplying by this matrix right here. Uh, notice what it does to the unit square. You reflect across the y-axis right there. Uh, if we want to reflect our point 2, comma 1 across the diagonal line, y equals x, remember that means multiply by this permutation matrix 0, 1, 1, 0. 2, 1 will swap to be 1, 2, so it switches positions. And so you see this right here. Uh, v will translate to its, uh, its reflection there. So the point 2, 1 turned into the point one, two, like we see it. So that's reflection across this diagonal line. It's hard to see this when you look at just the unit square, uh, because the unit square, when you reflect it across the diagonal line, this diagonal line is actually a line of symmetry for the unit square. So the image will actually be itself. But as you can see with the J's, things do get moved around. And actually, if you look at the color, the colors blended together, the cyan and magenta together, because the reflection lands on itself. And that's what we mean by symmetry after all. Symmetry is when you perform a transformation on a shape and then you end up with the original shape again. And then the last one to mention is that you wanna reflect through the origin. I said that was just multiplying by the, the, the negative one scalar matrix that is negative ones along the diagonal. So two one will map to negative two, negative one, which you can see right here. Here's two one, here's negative two, negative one reflection through the origin. You can think of this geometrically in the following way. You go, you, you take the path from your point to the origin and then continue in that same trajectory, the same distance. That'll give you reflection across, a reflection through the origin. Uh, this is what happens to the unit square when we reflect through the origin. Now I wanna mention that reflection through the origin is actually equivalent to just rotating the plane uh, by 180 degrees. And rotation is something we'll talk about a little bit later in this lecture. So because of that, we're not going to be too interested in, in reflections through points because reflections through points uh, basically can be taken care of by rotation. So we'll just worry about reflections really uh, across lines, again, with the emphasis on the x-axis, y-axis, and the diagonal line y equals x.